everyone so as you can see by the title I am going to make a shaker card from the Paper Dynamics Steampunk Kit. Um, I'm going to show how to use what would effectively be the waste um, in a lot of kits. It's basically what's left in the card when you pop out your die, die cut topper. So I'm going to show that. I also wanted to say thank you. Um, I got a lovely email saying that a lot of you guys have purchased the kit after watching my video um, a couple of days ago, which is absolutely fantastic. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm glad you liked it. I'm really glad you liked it. I love it. I've never stopped playing with it. Um, so, yes, I'm going to get into showing this. It's, it's a, an easy tutorial and, like I said, it's a good way to use up the bits. And you don't have to use any dies or things to make your shaker, so it's really cool. So, here we go. I hope you really enjoy it, guys. If you do, can you please hit me a thumbs up? Thank you. This is the card that I'm going to show you how to make. It's really, it's a cool shaker card. I absolutely love it. Fully five size with the beautiful um, Time to Let Steam Off in Party insert. So it's a, it's a cool card. I think it's a, it'd make an excellent card if you're given for a man's birthday as well. Okay, so let's get on with that. So, oh, actually, I'm going to show you these. Um, first of all, I made this card from the kit. I love the effect of this. So when it stands up, you're looking through and you can see the gears. If you would like to see a tutorial on this, guys, just leave a wee comment and I will do a tutorial on how I made that one. And then I also made this one, which I just love. And I've cut down one of the inserts and put it inside. I had to use my favourite spider. So that's those two. Okay, <clears throat> let's go. So what you'll need, first of all, is an A5 card blank. Now, this one that I've got here is just an A4 sheet of paper that I have scored and folded in half. But I know you can buy um, <coughs> A5 card blanks, but I've used the black because this card I'm designing, it, it is designed um, for me, for a man, but I do know <laughs> I absolutely adore steampunk. And if I received this card, I would be more than happy to receive it. So I'm saying it's, I'm designing it for a, main, a male card but obviously it can be female as well. So yeah, that is the first thing. Then we are going to use some of the brushed gold that is in the kit. I'm going to use a sheet of, well, part of the sheet of one of the beautiful um, topper sheets. And I'm going to use this one this time. Slightly different. Same concept, but just a slightly different image. Um, well, it is a different image from the one that I used before. I'm using the dragonfly one this time. And I used the pocket watch with the wings the last time. So I'm going to use that sheet. I need a piece of acetate. This was part of an A4 sheet. And um, some backing paper from the kit. And that is what... I'm going to use and then I'm going to die cut out some of the shapes I've already got them die cut out and I will show you that so anyway let's go on with that so the first thing I'm going to do is matte and layer a piece of this brushed gold onto my card so the way I do that is I just turn it over I leave myself a little border around one side and one top and then I mark this side here so that it's going to match on both sides and leave me a black border and then I do the exact same at the bottom edge so that I'm going to have the same at the top and at the bottom. I think that's the easiest way. I know a lot of people will measure with rulers and things like that. But you know what I'm like, guys? I just like quick, easy crafting. So I find that the easiest way to do it. Okay. Pop that to the side for a second because we're going to use it again. So that is going to go on there and then I'm going to take my piece of backing paper I've been using this cut I just I can't put it down okay so exact same I want it to be a bit there and a bit there so let's just mark it again Ok, 
okay and keep all your scraps of paper like this because even though it's only small it would look nice as a, a wrap around round a card or something like that so keep that put that back in with your kit okay so let's stick this down so i'm using my wet glue um i know a lot of people use double-sided tape it's just whatever your preferred type of adhesive is but i like using the wet glue okay so i'm just going to pop this down and center it up like that and do the exact same with my piece of designer paper and i'm using the beautiful sort of french well actually it's not it's like a green i was going to say french navy but it's like a sort of dark army greeny bluey it's beautiful can you see that so that's going on there okay let's wipe off a wee tiny bit of excess glue so now what we want to do pop that to the side for a second and take our topper sheet now i'm going to use this largest frame for my shaper so i want to take out the image and these just pop out really easily there's just tiny wee pips on them and if you do get any excess wee pips i haven't got any here but if you did you just take a little snip and it basically takes them straight off so then i want the frame so i'm going to fussy cut it out which is really easy because the foiling makes it easy to do a straight line okay And if you're not good at cutting straight lines with your scissors, you can do this on your trimmer. But I'm just doing it with my hands, my scissors. Okay. pop that aside so as you can see we've got the gold foil all the way around so it's equal on both sides now what I want to do is turn over my frame I've got glue on my fingers guys sorry take my acetate and basically I'm doing the same matting and layering technique again because I want this to cover this is what's going to create my shaker so and you want to make sure that you've covered this comes into a peak here so you want to make sure that you've covered it completely so take it almost to the edge all the way around and i'm just going to mark it where i want to cut it like that and again just cut it through Okay, okay. So we now have if I grab the right piece our acetate that is going to create our shaker. So what I'm going to use you can use wet glue at this time, but you have to be really careful when you press it down it doesn't squeeze out through the edges. So I'm going to use the six two red tape. And the red tape is the one that is extra, extra strong. So that's why I'm going to use that. So let's just pop that to the side. And get it open. Okay. And you want to stick it. Now this is a thin, thin, thin one that I'm using. It's only um, three millimetres thick, which is perfect for this project because you don't have a lot of space around the edge here for your tape to go. But if you didn't have it that thick, as I say, you can use glue. Just use, if you've got some of these fine tip um, glue applicators and just put your glue on in a fine line. And the reason I'm not doing it is because my glue doesn't have the fine tip and it's actually split down the edge and it puts out too much 
so it would just spurt out everywhere and it wouldn't look very nice so that's why I'm using my red liner tape in this instance okay and there we go right bring this back in take off my liner tape I've got no nails on I'm still trying to let my nails heal before I go and get them done I usually use stick-ons as you guys know and I love them I've got all different colors and things but I've really damaged my nails with them so I'm going to actually go to the shop and get my acrylics done but I'm needing to let these ones heal for a wee while and that's why there's nothing on them and they look awful okay so let's just stick this down here making sure i've got it straight and press it down so there we have the front of our shaker okay so next thing i'm going to do is stick down the topper so what i want to do to make sure that i get it as centered as possible i'm going to pop it down and put my Top of my, my shaker element over the top of it and make sure that that is centered so that it has the same border at the top and the sides roughly it doesn't have to be perfect and then I'm just going to slightly move that to there so that's where I know that where I want it pop on some glue and you don't need a lot of glue on this because it's going in the back of the shaker so you know it's not going to move just pop it on a little bit of glue and then stick that down okay and that is absolutely gorgeous look at that detail in it i mean even down to the tiny wee cogs at the bottom beautiful right so what we're going to do next <clears throat> is add on our um foam pads now for this one i am using the small foam pads these ones are from stick it they are, does it say what size? No, but I'll show you. It's these tiny, wee tiny ones here. Okay. So if you don't have them as small as this, or if you're using, um, like, this, like, foam tape, for example, you can just snip along it. And just make sure you don't use your good scissors because then they'll end up a bit gunky. You can clean them, but if you've got another pair, you can just snip it along. So, <clears throat> I'm not going to um, sit and make you guys watch me put all these on. I'm just going to quickly give you an idea of what I'm doing. So, I'm just taking two and three at a time, making sure that I don't leave any gaps because you don't want any of your shaker stuff to be able to, to leak out. So I'm just popping them close together, right along the edge. Um, you don't want to have it too far down. You want to have it right along the edge, all the way around. So I will do that and I will come straight back. Okay, so I've taken, I've put them all around and I've taken the backs of them off. So I'm going to place that to the side just now. Bring the card back in. And then I'm going to add in my shaker elements. Now, what I've done is I've taken the dies and I've cut out the five smallest gears um, in black and in the brushed gold. So, here they are here. I've just got them cut out in black and gold. You can see they cut out lovely. So I've got those, so I'm going to place them in the centre. Just over the topper in a random fashion. Like that. Then I'm going to take some sequins. Now, I've got these sequins. And you can use whatever you like. You can use sequins, beads, whatever you usually put in your shakers, you can use. So I'm going to take some of these, they're like sort of dark navy i'm just popping in a wee bundle i'm going to take some of the lighter blue as well because i've got some light blue in my topper 
I'm going to pop some of those in. A wee bit more of the dark ones. There. Then I've also got some of these beads. These are, um, they're black, but they've got like the Aurora Boy Alice over the top. I can see here. So I'm going to pop in some of the smallest ones. And I like putting beads in because when you do the shaking, they make a nice noise. Whoops. Come here. Some of them are escaping. And these are nice with the Aurora Body Alice in them, but obviously you can put in whatever one matches the topper that you're using or your colour scheme. Okay. We've got those in. Then what we're going to do is bring our shaker element back in and at this point I like to put just a small line of glue not a lot just a small line all over my sticky back um, foam pads because like I always say the foam pads and double sided tape and things eventually they will dry out and I want this because it's going to have so much stuff inside it to make sure that it is not going to open at any time in the future okay so then I'm going to make sure that all my pieces there's nothing around the edge everything's in the middle and I'm going to line this up over the top like that making sure that it's straight before I press it down now at this point when I've got it pressed down I'm going to shake them a little bit just to so it's not so bumpy make sure I've got it all pressed all the way around nice and firm it's not going to come out anywhere and then you can see we have a shaker let's give it a little tap and I love that because you can see the gears on the inside, you can hear the beads, it's just super cool. So we've got that. So that is the main element of the card. Now I'm going to go back to my topper sheet. And I'm going to use this sentiment, Scent with Love. It's going to pop it out. And I'm going to pop that right on the corner here actually let me have a look I'm just looking through my topper sheets because that one on the blue doesn't really stand out because it's blue on blue. So let's see. Because I already used the other one off that sheet. There's a grey one. That might be nice. Yeah, actually the grey might be a bit different. So, or I could use... No, I'm going to go with that grey. Quite... Oh, there's a dark one. That would look quite nice. That might match... No, that one's nice actually because that will match the dark paper in the background so we'll take this one so it's cool because you get lots of different choices in the kit that match all your papers so let's just pop that back in there and i'll put that in the kit as well to use on a different project so i'm going to use this one instead which is the best wishes because it matches kind of with the dark background and that is just going to go here kind of arched so all i'm going to do is put a tiny bit of glue in the center and some glue on the edge and then I'm just going to pop that there and hold it down for a wee second just to let the glue catch okay and you can see then it gives it this kind of raised effect so quite like that then what I've done is taken the locks and keys dies and I've cut out this die here in the gold, brush gold and black. And I've also used this key 
and cut it out in the gold and the black. Now the reason I've done it in two is because I like to shadow them. So all that means is pop one on top of the other. Now if you can see here, when you stick them together, it gives it this really nice shadow effect and it makes it look a bit 3D, a bit more real. So I'm going to do that with that and I'm also going to do it with the lock. So what to do is take your base one, which is a black one. No, sorry. Take your gold one and pop your glue on the back. And you don't need a lot of glue, but... And then take my black one, lay it over and just slightly offset it like that. And that's given me this shadow effect. So that I am going to put on this corner here. So just turn it over. Add on my glue. And that's going to go here. I'm just having it slightly over the acetate. Like that. Same with my key. Take the gold key. And put on my glue. Okay, if you've got one of these V um, Xyron machines, you could use that and run them through that to make them sticky on the back. Or some of the sticky roll, you can put that on the back and run them through your die cutter. But I just use the glue. And there we go, that one's got the slight shadow as well. And I'm going to put this one in the opposite corner. So you've got the lock and the key. This would make a nice 21st birthday card. Like key to the door kind of thing. And that one, because I've got that one going in that direction, I'm going to have this one going across here as well. Just like that. Okay, then, just to finish it off, you don't have to do this, but I've got some of these gems. And I think in this colour, they kind of match my scheme. And on the two peaks of my shaker element, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue I'm going to choose the largest gems. I'm going to pop one there and one here. Like that. And the final thing to do is take your insert. So you're just folding it in half, lining up the corners and just folding it in half. If you're not sure, you can do it on your scoreboard. But I'm just going to do it by. I like that okay and you can then just take your bone folder and run it down make sure you've got a nice precise crease so what I'm going to do let me see make sure I've got it the right way up let's open my card and they are slightly larger, so I'm just measuring it where I want it to go. Now, I like it to be slightly less on the inside, just a tiny black border. So I'm just lining it up to there. And then doing the exact same as the matting and layering technique. Put a tiny little line there and here. I've got everything covered in glue. As always, I always get it on my hands, I don't know how. So I'm just going to take that off there. And the same on this side. Bring my card back in again, make sure I've got it the right way because I've done that a hundred times. Then I'm just going to add a little line of glue. Now, if your, your um, insert is open in this way, I would add the glue along the top. I know people have their own ways of doing it, but that's just the way that I do it. A line of glue along the top. You can use your double-sided tape for this as well. Open my card and just line it back up. And then press it down. <clears throat> 
so that when you open your card you have this beautiful insert inside and it really just finishes it off and that is your finished shaker card how cool is that just from using the frame you didn't have to use any dies or anything to cut out the actual um shaker so yeah two of the same cards just with a slight different variety so i think that was really cool really effective so <clears throat> let me know what you think guys talk to me in the comments um if you are receiving your kit if you've ordered it let me know if you think this is useful if there's any tutorials that you would like to see me make um with this kit like a certain card type maybe a um an easel card or a gatefold card or anything any questions you have about the kit just ask me in the comments and i will definitely do that for you and answer your questions so yeah thank you so much for watching big thumbs up thanks again to paper dynamics and i will see you all again soon Bye bye